Hi, my name is Anshuman and I'm one of the co-founders at Scalar Academy. If you are new to tech and you have recently heard the term caching and don't know what it means, then this video is for you. I was fortunate to see scale at Facebook. I was fortunate to be part of teams that build products that scale to millions of queries per second and billions of users. I'm here to share some of those learnings with you. If you like the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, so I'll try to explain caching as as simple examples as possible. By the way, there is a bonus problem at the end of this video, so please do stay, stay till the end of the video to look at the solution of that. All right, so let's imagine that you want to make milk tea. One obvious ingredient of milk tea is milk itself. And um, milk I find in most grocery stores, department stores that are around me. So one obvious way whenever I'm making milk tea is that I go to the department store, fetch milk from here, and then make my milk tea. This to and fro process, by the way, ends up taking a lot of time. However, one thing which strikes me is, by the way, I can buy a refrigerator. I can buy a fridge which stays in my house only, where I can buy a few milk cartons at a time, and I can store it here. And when I'm making a milk tea now, then as long as there is some milk present in the fridge, I can use it from here. If there is no milk present in the fridge, then I go to the department store and I buy the next set of cartons of milk. So what I have done, what have I done in the process? I, I could still have gotten milk from department store. It's the same milk. However, I created this temporary storage, which is close to me, which is much faster for me to be able to store those milk so that I can make my milk tea faster. Plus then I have more motivation to make milk tea because I have it in my fridge. Very similarly, if you look at the design world, distributed systems world, you always have these systems that are looking for some or the other information, right? So machines talk to each other, they, they query for information. Imagine you load your Facebook profile page. That profile page would, would need to show your name, email ID, your friends, et cetera, et cetera. So for that, it would need a lot of information. So these, this machine would then ask for profile information for yours, which would be there in some other machine in the hard disk. And reading from hard disk is slow. If you would have noticed, when you transfer movies, etc., from from your friend's laptop, those movies are written to your hard disk, and those hard disk writes are fairly slow. Very similarly, reading from the hard disk is also slow, especially if if your data is lying somewhere you don't know where. So you'll have to search through the index to find where this profile information is, and then fetch that data from there. However, if the same information was in RAM somehow, which is main memory, then accessing that would be faster. However, I mean, if, if we're talking about Facebook, Facebook has so many people, so many profiles, all information cannot reside in RAM. It has to be in the hard disk, which is the same as me going to the department store every single time when I want to make milk tea. However, if I know that there are, let's say, certain profile pages that are fetched very often, that are more likely to be fetched than the other profile pages, then maybe I can create a fridge, a refrigerator, where I can store the information of these pages. So that when somebody asks for these pages, then I don't go to the departmental store, which is the hard disk in this case. Maybe I have that information in RAM or a faster memory access. I mean, let's not say RAM. Some place where I can find that information faster than actually having to read from the hard disk of a different machine. That process is called caching. Caching is exactly what I did with my refrigerator to department store. It is exactly doing that to reduce the latency of fetching that information in some cases. A cache will never be as big as your total storage. There will always be cases when I run out of milk in my refrigerator or when the information is not present in this fast storage. And that process, by the way, this is caching. And when I find data in my cache, it's called a hit. When I do not find the data because it is not present, therefore I'll have to go to the departmental store or go and read from this hard disk. That is called miss. 
So whenever you find data in the cache, it's a hit. When you don't find it, it's a miss. That is caching. And caching is something, by the way, you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. In, for example, you might have noticed that when you load a website for the first time, it's usually slower. But when you refresh, it loads faster. Sometimes when your internet is not working, you keep refreshing after a while, and eventually the website loads. Your internet doesn't get faster. That's not the reason why it loads. It loads because once, let's say there, is, there was an image on the website, once that image has loaded, that means your browser has now gotten that milk, carton of milk. So it caches that in its own memory. On your browser, on Chrome, it gets cached. So next time when you load the same website with the same image, the browser doesn't go and fetch the entire image from the other website. It only checks if it was the same image. If it was the same image, then it fetches it from its local memory, which means I don't have to go over that slow internet to fetch that image. And therefore, by using caching, I have significantly reduced the latency of fetching that data. That is caching with your browser. Systems within also do caching in various forms. <clears throat> One simple question I have. If you haven't seen my CAP theorem video, please go and see that because this question is slightly based on that. Imagine you are building a very consistent system. You would want that if you're doing caching, then this cache data is, is exactly consistent and exactly the same as the data present in your hard disk for whatever entries it has. If you're building a consistent system and you're doing caching there, there when I ask you to update, how do you go about updating um, such a system? In the context of the departmental store and milk tea example, let me say, let's, let's say that you want your milk tea to always use the latest milk that is present in the department store or always use the milk that is present in the department store. How do you validate that the milk that you have in fridge as of now is the ex exactly the same milk that is present in the department store? How do you do that? <clears throat> there is something called as, uh, well, actually, if you look at uh, how you would do it, there are only two ways of doing it, right? One is when you tell me that, hey, here is new milk to restock your store with, or here is new data, right? Like, which is, let's say, and on my profile name, for some reason, my name changes. So whenever there is data pertaining to me that is being updated, it does not go directly to the hard disk. Imagine this is my hard disk or hard disk storage, and here is cache. Whenever this update operation comes, it goes through the cache. So first I check, is this entry present in the cache, which is, is my name, is my profile cached? If it is cached, then I first update the entry in the cache. And then I update the entry in the hard disk. And only then, when both of them have been updated, only then I return success. This is called write through cache which means whenever new milk comes to the department store, it goes through me. It goes through, through my house. I do a verification and only then I let the milk pass. That is right through cash. Or the other way could be that if the database is aware of where my caching system is, whenever there is a profile update, the database tells cache to throw away whatever information I have regarding my profile because that is now out of date. And only once invalidation has been done, only this write has been done, invalidation has been done, only then you return success. Or in the context of, again, departmental stores as well as um, milk, let's say whenever my department stores gets a new kind of milk, they call me up and they say, hey, look, please throw away the milk that you have in your refrigerator. It is old now. We have a newer quality of milk. And that way I make sure I'm always 
cooking my milk tea with the newest quality of milk that I have in the market. That way I stay consistent. That was all for me for today. I hope again, caching made sense to you. You understood why caching happens in systems. I'll keep doing more of these videos to help you with more concepts around distributed systems and data structures. If you like the video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you want me to do a video on, on a topic that you find interesting. Thank you, thank you so much.